Hello everyone and welcome to the very first episode of the Violet Creek Podcast. My name is Carrie Ann and you can find me on Instagram and Ravelry as Violet Creek. Um, it will be linked down below including all of the notes for the podcast as well as any links that I can find for the podcast. Um, so since this is the first episode, I'm a little awkward. It just feels very awkward um, to be talking to a camera. Um, but I guess we'll start with an introduction. So I am 24. I live in Manitoba, Canada, um, in the rural area. And I have been knitting for about four years now, um, crocheting for five and I've just kind of been obsessed with it since I started. Um, I also like sewing, um, painting, and so this podcast is going to kind of entail everything that I'm making and working on. Um, there's quite a few things that I dabble in, <laughs> and I'm always up for a new craft or hobby. Um, so. If you're into that, if you want to see what I'm making, stick around, subscribe, um, go follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to post there more and yeah, hopefully this will be a fun thing I can do for a while. Um, so previously I did have an Etsy shop. Um, I was, I did dye like a couple skeins of yarn. It wasn't anything major. Um, but I did previously have an Etsy shop and I just kind of got a little bit scared um, with it, I guess. I don't know, I was just kind of scared to take like the extra leap of like, okay, so we've sold a little bit, let's dye up some more. And yeah, it, I just got really scared and really busy with other life. Um, not that that will really change much, but um, in the near future, I do plan to... Um, open up my shop again and start selling not just yarn but other things as well um, so if you are into that as well that will always be at the end of my episode in case you don't want to watch that um, there will be nothing today because I haven't haven't had the time to start that either at the moment but hopefully soon um, so I did do notes before so that I would be a little bit organized um, so we're going to start with finished objects. So I have a few finished objects, which I know I haven't podcasted before, so it's kind of a little bit confusing to have finished objects, but I finished them recently, so I figured why not kick it off with some finished objects. Um, so the first one are these rainbow socks, and they do have a heel. I don't have sock blockers yet. I probably should buy some now that I'm podcasting but um, that'll come, I guess. <laughs> so I do have the full pair. Here's the other one for proof. Um, so they're just like a self-striping sock. I did dye this, so this is what I was dyeing before um, and would really like to dye self-striping again because it, it, even though it's a lot of work, I had so much fun dyeing it and thinking of new colors and you know that kind of thing. Um, and of course, it was a very small scale, but I, I would like to, even if it's on a small scale, I would like to dye again. And hopefully soon. I'm looking into ordering yarn pretty soon. So this is what it looks like. That was the yarn. So it's a six stripe um, self-striping. And then for the he heel and toe, yeah, heel and toe, um, I dyed this as well. It just says like a, a little mini to go with it. So it just has, it's essentially just speckled on a grayish base I guess so it's for the heel and toe so for these ones were my, actually my first afterthought heel um, and I really enjoy knitting an afterthought heel I didn't think I would and I was honestly very intimidated by it at first because you're cutting your knitting and that was like absolutely terrifying but I watched um, Kay from the crazy sock lady I watched her video on it and I just followed it one day and it was really easy and her video was awesome at explaining everything and you know you only have two extra two extra ends to weave in I guess if you're doing a contrasting heel anyways you only have two extra ends to weave in so that's not many um, and I do like the way they fit as well so I have these ones done 
And then I also finished a second pair in these. So I have all four here of the rainbow ones. Um, so these ones, I did the heel and toe with the mini as well, but I just, um, I slipped the second stitch of the first round of each color, if I'm explaining that correctly. So I got the idea from the Cozy Up Knits girls. Um, so Jamie knit her socks like this, which I love them. They are my favorite podcast. <laughs> Um, and that was kind of the major inspiration for me to start my podcast, um, as well as the grocery girls, uh, the crazy sock lady. There's just so many podcasts that I watch. Like literally that is all I watch now is podcasts. So that's why I started my own. But, um, yeah, so essentially the first round of each color change, you just knit one, slip one, knit one, slip one all the way around. And then you just do that for each one. And it just kind of makes a really pretty pattern. So I... I did that for the second pair so that I could also like differentiate them a little bit. Um, so it's a little bit easier for me to tell which pair or which sock goes with which um, if I wear them at the same time. Uh, and so this used all of my yarn from that cake, which I'm really happy with that you can get, I can get two pairs of socks from one cake of yarn because that just makes it cheaper to knit socks, I guess. Um, and I knit them right after each other. So I essentially knit four socks that were pretty much the same. Of course, it did switch it up a little bit with the knit one, slip one. Um, but I wasn't bored of it. So I think in the future, I'm just going to knit the whole dang skein of yarn. Um, and then that way you don't have, you know, little balls of yarn in your stash that you could knit a whole other sock with. Um, so yeah. So the other finished object I have is not fiber crafting related and this was actually on my work in progress list up until a couple days ago um, because I had I'm just gonna grab it here I had every intention of podcasting a couple days ago and then I was I literally sat down to podcast and I got called to work because I'm on call um, for work so <laughs> I didn't get to do that and then when I got home I finished this which is a painting so it's actually a paint by number and I don't know if I can get it all on the screen oh there we go let me go um <laughs> so it's a paint by number and this one I purchased at Michael's so if they still have it on their website I will link it um but yeah so they just they give you all the paints they give you the canvas it's printed on with all of the numbers and like little sections and then you literally just paint the number and then you get this really beautiful like painting if I'm just doing that justice so I finished it the other day and so I'm very excited about that so I'm gonna hang it up I'm gonna get it framed one day soon and so I guess I should show you another one I had finished another one like a couple months ago so which I'm kind of I really just want to go get this framed because it is it is the season for it, so it was rolled up, so it's a little bit crooked, but this one I got off of Amazon, and it's just like a rainy, like, fall scene, but it is so pretty, like, so pretty, and, like, the background is, like, a greeny, like, they got the sky perfect when it rains, you know? Just, I love this one. And I, since it's fall, coming up to fall now, I, I'm obsessed with it. And I, I really want to get a frame for it. I don't know how to get that crease out in the middle. That's just how it comes. Um, and if I can find this one on Amazon, I will link it as well. Um, so now we're going to start, oh, hold on. Sorry, my cat was eating my socks. She's a monster. <laughs> Okay, so now we're going to start with whips. Um, so I do have a few whips. Um, I also have some that I'm not going to show just because I haven't worked on them recently. Um, and then when I do pick them up again, I will show them. So the first one is my Autumn League Pullover. And so the yarn I am using. So I'm kind of at the end of my ball. It looks like this, but it was from Michaels. Here's a full skein. So it's the Loops and Threads yarn the brushed swirl line and it's in the color slate so you can't get this anymore I know that because I bought it on clearance and it was three dollars 
for each ball, which is 200 grams. So, and it's about, I would say it's about a DK. I think it says worsted on here. Yeah, it says four medium, but like, honestly, I think it's a DK. Um, and it's 46% acrylic, 44% polyester, 5% wool, and 5% alpaca wool. So I feel like that's what makes it fuzzy. Um, but like for three bucks for a 200 gram skein, I thought that was a freaking steal. And it's soft, like it is crazy soft. And it's like fuzzy, so I figured it would kind of be like knitting with mohair, um, but a really cheap introduction to it. Um, so I actually purchased a lot of that yarn, like it's kept right there. Um, like I'm gonna have enough for at least two sweaters. <laughs> Cause I did buy eight balls of yarn. I don't know what I was thinking, but I bought eight. So I have it started here. It's kind of awkward to show. Here we go. Okay. So here's what it looks like. Um, so you can see the little detail at the top there, that really cute X. So I have the front and the back unit in the round as you're making the raglan sleeves. And then I'm currently just and you can see that's kind of striping now, which I find funny. Um, but I'm just knitting the front and then the back is held on a cord as well as the sleeves. They're on their own separate cord. You can see the ends there. I just had really short cords, so I figured I might as well put them to use. Um, I'm knitting the medium large size and I'm doing it on a US size seven. So Again, it's like a DK-ish weight, um, but I really like the gauge that I got. I actually gauge swatched for this, which I, this is the first project I've gauge swatched for, which I know is bad, but, um, but it just has, I don't know if you can see, I guess you can kind of see. It's going to be, it's not see-through, but it's not like, like, so, like stiff, you know what I mean? So it's, it's knit at like a really nice gauge, and I think it's just going to be, Awesome. So I'm just knitting down the front until it reaches a certain um, length and then I'll do the back and then the sleeves. And so I'm really liking that. Um, it is just you knit and then you purl and then you knit and you purl. Um, but I think I'm getting better at purling. Um, also this yarn's kind of annoying to work with because it is that furry-ness. But um, so far it's great. I'm loving it and I'm really going to love the sweater when it's done and I've been trying to work on it as much as I can when I'm at home um, because I just, I want to wear it and it's coming up to like the perfect season for it. So I'm excited for that. I think it'll look super cute with like jeans, um, leggings even, that kind of thing. So I'm really excited for that. Um, so the next project that I have here is the Habitation Throw. And again, I will link everything down below, so don't worry about that. Um, so this one, I am quite far on. This is also knit on a US 7. Oh, it's a little messed up in here. <laughs> it was squished down in my bag, and I don't think my cord is long enough for me to show you properly. Um, let me see if I can... Yeah, it's probably not long enough, but this is what it looks like. Um, it's a really great easy pattern. It's in fingering weight. Um, let me see if I can, yeah. So I'll show you it up close so you can see the stitches and the way the colors go together and everything. I am so excited for this blanket to be done. I didn't know how much I would love a fingering weight blanket, but it is like the perfect, like, just throw on blanket. It doesn't matter how cold it is in your house. You can put it on and it's not going to be too hot, but it, yet it's still going to give you that like comfort of having a blanket. I just love it. And this is also in yarn from Michaels. It is also the loops and threads line, which very affordable. Um, so this is the loops and threads wool like. So here's one of the balls and the yellow is golden yellow. The red is mauve. The blue, I don't have the label for anymore, but I believe it was navy. And then this, the beigey color is beige. So 
super affordable yarn. I think one skein is like $4.99. You can always use their coupon. They always have at least a 30% off coupon. Um, and then I just kind of buy one skein at a time. But I had bought this for a different project that I was going to make for a friend. And then I ended up not making it for them. I will not make it for them. <laughs> um, so I just, yeah, so I had all this yarn and I was, I was going to make a shawl with it. But I was like, oh, it's not even... It's not wool and I'm, I am kind of want like a like an actual wool shawl or you know something like that. Like it's acrylic, I believe. I believe it's all acrylic. 85% uh, acrylic, 15% nylon. So it does have a little bit of stretch which is really nice. Um, but it's really soft, cheap. Um, if you're allergic to wool this might be an option for you. Or if you're just getting into knitting. Um, also for a blanket like like, I would obviously love a blanket made out of wool, and I hope to do, like, a blanket made out of minis one day. Um, but, like, for something that's going to get, you know, my cats are going to sleep on it, it's going to get thrown in the washing machine a bunch, you're going to spill food on it probably, you know, like, I just, this is cheap. Um, also, the amount of yarn that you need for a blanket is quite a bit. Um, so, it's just it's just a good option, you know? Um, and not everybody has all that money for yarn, which I wish I totally did, but, and this is just in like a roots bag. Um, I don't have big bags and I, I have one purchase that's on its way, which I'm very excited about because it'll be my first like large sweater size, blanket size project bag. But for now it just fits nicely in here and you know, it's just a nice bag to take around. Um, so the next whip I have is like almost finished so I have these socks I have both socks they just don't have heels and I have the little mini left for the heels so this yarn is by Lolo did it and it is her once upon a time colorway and the mini is bumble also by Lolo did it um, so I just used what I had left of a skein of yarn that I had already knit socks out of from her um, and I had purchased this years ago, so I don't even know if she dyes this still, but it is a really pretty. I'll show it up close. It's purple and yellow is a kind of micro striped, which I, I love. Um, so I'm going to do an afterthought heel on these. I just haven't gotten around to it yet. They're going to be shorter than what I typically knit, um, but that's fine. I just wanted to use up what I had left because there was still a substantial amount. Um, but yeah, I guess if I did contrasting cuffs I probably could have gotten quite a bit more but that's totally fine I can have some sneaker socks or something so I'm gonna get those cut in hopefully soon next oh I'm missing a bag I'll have to go grab that soon but so next in this bag which might have some cat hair on it pansies are my favorite flower which you can tell from Violet Creek um, so this is by Birdie and Poppet. They are on Etsy. You can see that. And this bag is, I love this bag. I've had it since I started knitting. It was the first project bag I purchased. Um, and it's like the perfect size. It's made really well. Um, I've washed this in the washing machine because I, I got, I spilled iced coffee on it, I think. Um, and it's still like, sorry it still stands up by itself you can still like roll this down and knit out of it um, and it's just like such a good size because you could fit like quite a bit of yarn in this um, or you could just put a sock in here so I just have a sock so this yarn is by Manjusha Fiber Arts which is local to me and their yarn is relatively um, affordable just cat hair all over this but whatever um, but this is her Monarch colorway, which that is 100% a Monarch butterfly. And so I'm just knitting some socks for my boyfriend out of this color because he loves orange. And I had purchased this yarn like years ago at the Manitoba Fiber Festival, which was my first and only fiber festival that I went to because of COVID. Um, and actually I skipped one year because I just, I think I was working or something. But so on these socks, they are large because they are a man's sock. 
um, and they're kind of like sucky any right now because I did do ribbing on the whole sock just on the front though not on the back so the back is just plain and it kind of pools which I like I like pooling I think it's cool so this one I did a six by two rib yeah so six by two which is kind of a weird number, but I didn't want them too sucky any because I have never made him pattern socks. I've made him plenty of just vanilla socks and he really likes them, but I didn't know if they were going to be too tight on his feet. I also went down a stitch count on these, so I believe there's 72 stitches on here. I'm honestly not sure. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 18, 20, 22, 26. 32, 34, 36. Yeah, 72. So 72 stitches, and I was doing 80 before. Um, my gauge was really tight before, but it loosened up. So I I went down stitches. I didn't go down needle size because I still like the fabric that I get. These are on a, a US size one. Um, but yeah, so I just have just a little bit past the cuff. You can see better on this side with this the stockinette on there and then this one I'm at the toe and so for heel and toe this one's a fish lips kiss heel and I'm just using a patents croy black I believe it is um, but I just have I just purchased you know a couple skeins of that and that's what I'm using for the heel and toe it's really good sturdy yarn which he wears his socks to work so he might need the sturdiness um, and then I'm just going to pause and quickly grab my other sock bag. Alright, so I grabbed my other bag. So this is it. This one is by Molly Klein Design. She'll show her tag. I love her bags. I love her yarn. I haven't purchased any of her yarn yet, but I just had to have this bag. And I actually got the last one. So if you got cart jacked, that was me and I'm sorry. Um, but I will link her shop down below. Her bags are awesome. So this is her like sock size. Um, and it's honestly like the perfect size for socks. So in comparison, the birdie and poppet bag is a little bit bigger, but not like too much. I think the gusset in the bottom is bigger. So you might be able to fit one more skein in there. But so this is housing a sock that I take with me to work. So um, for my job, I stay I stay overnight somewhere and then I come back home the next day. So when I stay in the hotel overnight. Okay, so when I go to work, um, I stay overnight at the hotel um, and then I come back the next day kind of thing. Um, it's just how my job goes. So when I, I obviously bring a knitting project because I would be crazy not to. And so I bring um, this sock so this sock bag stays essentially in my work stuff which is why I had to pop over and grab it because I totally forgot about it but so this is another um, self striping that I dyed so this was my PB&J colorway which I would love to dye again so I really like doing a speckled stripe because I just think speckled stripes are so fun and then this is just a contrasting color um, just a purple with like brown speckles. Um, so I'm going to do an afterthought heel on these as well. Here's the yarn in a cake. And then here's the purple in the cake. So it's just really pretty like lilac-y color with brown speckles. And then I also have this brown one. So this is just like a brown tonal with brown speckles. And so I don't know if I'm going to use this one. I used this one on the other pair of socks because I have made a pair of socks with these already. Um, or with this yarn already. So I want to make them a little bit different. And so I might just do the purple for each, especially since I have so much of it. But maybe I'll do the heel with the... Um, with the brown, I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. Um, and then I have one more project. So this is just in like this fancy uh, 
holographic bag. Um, so this is a cross stitch project, which I guess I didn't include that in my intro when I told you about all the things I liked. So I do like to cross stitch as well. And I tend, I tend to go through phases where I really like one kind of project and then so I'll like I'll, I'll knit a bunch of projects and then I'll crochet a bunch and then I'll cross stitch a bunch. So I kind of tend to go through phases, but this is called Hummingbird Art and it's a uh, pattern I found on Etsy so I will link that down below and this is just on 18 count Ada it's just the oatmeal color from loops and threads from Michaels and I just have the bottom little flower branch thing started here I should have printed off a picture of the like what it's supposed to look like but I, I didn't do that so yeah, so I really like it. I love the colors. It's a lot. Um, it's probably the most intense stitching I've ever done. Uh, I'm just going to see if I have a picture of the pattern here. I have the pattern pattern, but I don't know if I have like a cover page or anything. Um, but so there's a lot of ones where you use like one strand of one color and then another strand of another color. And I've never had to do that before. And then, you know, sometimes there's only like one stitch yeah I don't have the cover page um, but sometimes there's only like you know like one or two stitches so it's just you're constantly changing colors and it's just it's a lot going on but I think it's gonna be really pretty there's a lot of back stitching which I don't love back stitching but maybe I maybe I won't be bothered by it after this project um, there's also French knots which I've never done either um, for some flowers in there so I'm pretty excited about that and, and yeah, um, hopefully I'll have some time to work on that soon. I haven't really wanted to cross stitch lately, just because again, I just kind of go through stages. Lately I've just wanted to knit all the things, so. So that's everything I've been working on and everything I've finished. So I guess we'll go into acquisitions, which is very exciting. So we're gonna start with something that was full of cat hair um, but that was like I've wanted something like this not this exact one but this is what I ended up getting um, for a while but just never never pulled the trigger um, just because they're kind of expensive so I'm talking about a needle set and I got the Knitter's Pride special one so they have the shorter needle tips they're only four inches so I do have the sevens out on my autumn league currently and I had to purchase the these um, like tips before not the special ones I have the five inch ones but I just I really liked them um, I really like the, their cords there's they're like decent priced and they're like a really good quality um, the black cord and the actually neither of these cords came with this kit um, I think this kit only came with two 16 inch cords which you couldn't get with the five inch tips which is why I got the special ones which are the four inch and I like a four inch tip better yeah plus you then you can you know you knit hats and stuff with it um, so those are actually holding my sleeves at the moment um, and then I purchased a bunch of extra cords I tried to get all of their sizes they were out of stock of one size from my local knit shop which is Wolseley Wool um, they were having a sale, so I got this on sale, and I figured, you know what, treat yourself to a set of needles because now I can gauge swatch and then, oh, that's not really doing, you know, I don't really like that too much, so I'm going to go up a size or, you know, like that kind of thing, and I never really had that option before because I would have to, you know, go to the store, buy the other tips that I might not even use, um, and overall, it's just cheaper to purchase a set, um, and then it comes in in like a nice little case and you can carry it with you and it's just like, like nice and compact and I think if you're like really in, like I'm really into knitting so I think if you like if you've been doing it for a while like I've been knitting for four years now so it's it's not like it's just a hobby that I you know might just throw away one day because I don't want to do it anymore like I'm which I mean you never know I might decide that I don't like knitting one day but 
I don't think that'll be for a while. So you might as well treat yourself to something nice that's a tool that you're going to use, you know, for multiple projects. So I picked those up. Um, and then also during the sale, I got some yarn. So I got a sweater's quantity of yarn. And it is this. I just have it still in the bag. The bag's a little trash, but the bag that they packaged it in. So I purchased all of this like online through their website and then just picked it up. Um, so this is the Barocco Pirouette um, yarn. So there's the label. And it is a boucle yarn, which I've never knit with boucle, but I've also kind of heard some horror stories about it. But I'm I'm excited because I think I'm gonna love the outcome of it. And it's kind of like a it's a brownie gray almost, which I think is really a cool color. So it's 41% baby alpaca, 41% merino wool, and 18% nylon. And the color is 2330, which of course they don't put the name of it on here. I can't remember what it was called. Um, but it did look more gray on the website. And then when I got it, I was like, oh no, I'm going to be knitting a brown sweater. I don't know how I feel about that. But honestly, like if you look back here, like it looks brown, I guess next to my gray sweater, it looks brown. But if I'm looking down at it in like a darker light where there isn't like, there's a light behind my phone that I'm recording on. Um, just so you can see everything a little bit better, but I think in natural lighting, it looks more gray. Either way, I'm going to like it. So I think I'm going to knit the no frills with this. I have 11 balls. So that's all that they had in stock. Um, and they were like really cheap. They're 50 gram balls. If I didn't say that already. And I guess I should tell you the yardage, right? So it has 140 yards, 128 meters for 50 grams. So I think this is like a worsted, if I remember correctly. Or bulky. It says bulky on the label. Made in Peru. So that's that. So I have 11 of those and I'm just kind of waiting till I finish my Autumn League. Um, I just don't want to get overwhelmed with sweaters. So um, I am excited to cast this one on once I'm done the Autumn League or close to being finished the Autumn League. Maybe once I'm on like the sleeves I'll cast on the other sweater um, just to kind of have a little bit of a break from Sleeve Island. Um, and then the last acquisition is from Michaels. So I, sorry for the rustling of the bag, but I took advantage of their clearance bin. So they had a bunch of Patton's Croy sock yarn on clearance for $5 a ball. And so they're originally $8.49. And so for five bucks, I figured why not? So I got three of the amethyst stripes. I think I got three. It's been a while. Just kidding. I got four. Let me grab the other one here. So I got four balls of the amethyst stripes. Is that? That's upside down. <laughs> so there's amethyst stripes. So I think these might be getting discontinued, like at least the colors. And so there's that one. So I got four of those. So I'm just going to knit as many socks as I can. I love Patton's Croy and I'm gonna knit socks for work, um, like work socks, work boot socks. Um, so I'm pretty excited about that. And then I got, I think I got another four. Did I drop one? Yeah. So I got another four of the Mexicala stripes. Mexicala stripes. So these ones are like really bright and fun. So I got another four of those. So again, socks for work, just gonna knit. So if they're 50 grams, I should be able to get around one pair of socks per ball, depending on if the colors match up, because I do match up the colors on Patton's Croy. Some people don't, it's totally up to you. Um, I'm a little anal about it. Um, so I like when they match up. So I might get, you know, three pairs of socks out of the whatever, and then have little bits for a scrappy project in the future. And then at one of the Michaels that I went to, because of course I went to a few, um, they had the black yarn. So it's called Cole in the Patton's Croy. The black 
that I was using in the Monarch socks. This isn't the same, like I had purchased that before just to use it for the Monarch socks, but they had this one and these were on clearance for $3, which they're the same original price as the other ones, um, but they had these at one store for three bucks. I guess they just had a bunch of black and nobody was purchasing them. There was no black at the other store, so I feel like other people had the same idea as me is to buy this for like heels, toes, and cuffs. So I think for both um, of those colors, I'm going to do black heels, toes, and cuffs. And for really any patent scroll I do in the future, because why not if you can make your yarn go a little bit further. And I thought for three bucks, like these are 50 grams. So like even to just have black yarn in your stash, like fingering weight yarn, I figured for $3, you couldn't go wrong. So I picked up four of those. Um, so I guess 12 skeins of Patton's Croy. <laughs> and of course I have some in my stash at the moment, so it's a little embarrassing, but I mean, it was on clearance. So, and I would pay full price for Patton's Croy because I do love Patton's Croy. There is a time and a place for commercial sock yarn. And I love it. I also love that it's self stripes because that is just self striping yarn is probably the coolest yarn. I mean, I love all yarn, but self-striping yarn has like a special place in my heart. <laughs> so that is everything that I've been working on, that I've purchased, that I've finished. Um, so I hope you enjoyed my podcast. I was hoping to make it short and sweet, but it's already quite long. <laughs> um, and you know, they might get longer as the time goes by as I have more stuff to finish and cast on and stuff. So maybe next time I'll have a new sweater cast on. I want to have some socks finished um, and yeah, just hopefully there is next time. <laughs> hopefully you enjoyed this podcast. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, um, like my post, uh, go follow me on Instagram so that I, you can see what I'm posting and I will also post when I'm going to podcast there so that you guys know. Um, also stuff that I'm working on, stuff that I see that I'm like, ooh, that's, that's fun pretty um and yeah so thank you so much for joining me uh leave me a comment down below what i can improve on what you would like to see what you enjoyed or just hello um i'm excited to do knit alongs and like giveaways in the future i'm excited to open up my shop again and show you guys all that stuff and hopefully get to dye and yarn again um, so thanks for watching bye